a cold, rainy day outside, but here inside it's warm. And you want to have that attitude not just for the meditation hall, but just for yourself. The weather may be cold and wet and rainy, but the mind isn't cold, wet, and rainy. The mind doesn't have any direct contact with those things. It has contact through the senses and through your ideas about what's going on outside, how you filter things, what you pay attention to. And if you pull the wetness and the coldness inside the mind, well, it's going to feel miserable. But you can leave it outside. You have the choice of what you're going to focus on. You can focus on whatever sense of warmth there is in the body and breathe with that warmth. Allow the warmth to glow inside. And you'll find that the weather outside doesn't impinge on the mind nearly as much as it would as if you're sitting there complaining about it. So you can let it do its thing, and you do your thing, and staying separate like this, you're fine. For the little discomfort there is in the body doesn't have to make huge inroads into the mind. The Buddha makes that comparison with a person shot by an arrow, and that's not bad enough, and the person shoots himself with another arrow. In other words, the first arrow is physical discomfort, physical pain, and the second arrow is when the mind gets all worked up about things. Well, usually it's not just one arrow. It's this third, fourth, fifth arrow. And you think about it for a minute. You know, the Buddha was a member of the noble warrior class and knew if you'd been shot by an arrow, you lie very still. The less you move, the less the arrow is going to hurt. Whereas if you go through the effort of shooting yourself with another arrow, that's going to make the first arrow even worse. And sometimes shooting ourselves with the arrow is not enough. We start digging the arrow around in the wound and it makes it even worse. So you have to look at what your mind is doing to take the raw material of your experience and turn it into suffering or learn how to not turn it into suffering. This is a really important skill. And it's important that you realize that you have that choice. There are these two kinds of suffering. There's a suffering that just comes from the fact that we've got a body, and the body's constantly changing, and the situation around us is constantly changing. The body's hungry, gets cold, gets hot. That's the normal way of things. But we don't have to suffer from it, because the second kind of suffering is one that's really important. It's the suffering that comes from our own craving and clinging and ignorance. And that's what really brings suffering to the mind. So fortunately, that's the one that we can put an end to. And when we put an end to that, the, the minor discomforts outside are not going to be that big a deal. Even aging, illness, and death are not going to be that big a deal. So we have to understand the extent to which we're taking a situation and making it worse, and also realize that we have the ability to develop the skills in which we can actually make it better inside. Even though the situation outside may not change, we can at least make things better inside. We have that choice, and that skill is available. So it only makes sense that you choose to work on that skill, because it's the most important skill you can, you can master.